So uh, I'm a bit of a generalist. I, um, I'm not 100% expert in one area or even a 50% expert in two areas. I think on a good day, I'm a 10% expert in 10 different areas. So um, I, uh, you know, I struggled with that and fought against that for a long time, but I finally made peace with it. And Seas is a place where I'm, I'm really happy to be because it's okay. Just to give you a little tidbit, 35 years ago, I was an engineer on the space shuttle working on lightning strikes, so I could actually give a lightning talk. <laughs> Um, today, my, uh, my four bullet points here about current research interests, uh, the top one is sort of my current grant-funded research. I'm working on how do ecosystem processes and plant community processes integrate, and you can see the listing of uh, processes there that I'm working on. Um, second, kind of a broader, longer-term interest, uh, I see sustainability science as a new field that is being cobbled together from pieces of existing fields. And I, I'm interested in how ecosystem science can link to other fields to kind of build this new field of sustainability science. Um, third, I'm getting interested in case studies. I had a sabbatical last year, developing an undergraduate class. I developed a lot of case studies. And I'm thinking, you focus on a problem, you bring in all the disciplines needed to address that problem, um, you learn something about sustainability. And if you do that over and over and over, I think that's a really interesting approach to, to learn about sustainability. And finally, um, if I'm being honest, this is a question uh, that I have been interested in for a long, long time. You know, sometimes you choose a research question, and sometimes it chooses you. And this is one that chose me and, and just won't let go. Kind of a philosophical interest in how do models increase our understanding. Um, if you want to have a two or three hour conversation on that, you know, just don't get me started. <laughs> Uh, systems I work in, coastal wetlands, in the Great Lakes, uh, eastern forests, and I do some work in human-dominated mixed landscapes. Let's see how I'm doing. Um, I like to joke that this is a rare sighting of a modeler outside of his natural habitat. <laughs> uh, to give you, uh, you know, some research results here, this is from a wetland model that I developed uh, with other folks over a period of time. We're looking at invasive species in Great Lakes coastal wetlands. Nitrogen inflow here, as nitrogen inflow increases, um, so each dot here represents the end of a model run, okay? So we do a bunch of different model runs with different levels of nitrogen inflow. The higher the nitrogen inflow, the more successful the invader. The y-axis here is success of the invader. There's a threshold response, and it's mediated by water level. If the muck is anaerobic, the nitrogen doesn't cycle as fast, and that uh, makes the invader slower to take over. Kind of an interesting model result. We're testing some of these ideas in uh, mesocosm studies, collaborating with Deborah Goldberg and others in the EB. Um, we're also applying this uh, second bullet point up here. I do some uh, engagement and external outreach. We're applying this model to help managers simulate different ways they could try to remove Phragmites and restore native uh, marsh plants and wetlands, uh, and using this model to help managers. Uh, finally, courses that I, that I teach related to this. I teach uh, two graduate courses, Applied Ecosystem Modeling and Landscape Ecology. Um, and uh, this new undergraduate course, Environ 305, Sustainability Issues in the Great Lakes Region, which uses a case-based approach. All right, thanks a lot.